Welcome to the Stephen Hartman Podcast. What's the show? No one knows. Who am I? Who am I? Who cares? Let's start the show. That's right. It's time to start the show. Better make sure this mic's on. (laughs) All right. What's up, people? How's the weekend going? It's going pretty good for me. Enjoying the day off. It's looking like it might rain, but knowing how it is around here, it probably won't. <clears throat> I will say, at least it's cooled it off. That's one good thing. <clears throat> Hope everybody's having a good weekend, though. It's uh, It's gone by pretty quick already. I can't believe it's already Sunday. Going to be over here pretty quick. <laughs> but, you know, that's how it goes, man. Especially when you only get the one day off. Like, days just kind of fly by. But. Uh. Oh yeah, I was going to talk about the the baby appointment because I don't think I talked about that last time. <clears throat> it was just a quick appointment. Uh, nothing crazy. Everything's going good. Baby looks good. Next week's the ultrasound, so we'll get some more pictures there. I'll probably show them to you guys then. Can't wait to see those, man. She's gonna hopefully she won't be all shy like she was last time because she keeps turning away from the microphone for some reason. Don't know why. The microphone <laughs> turning away from the camera. Uh but hopefully we'll get some good pictures this next time and I'll I'll put some up here so people can see. But it'll be like eight weeks left by then for sure. It's like damn, getting closer every every day. Can't wait. We've been uh, slowly getting the stuff that we need. Uh, some of her friends have given us, you know, quite a bit of clothing and stuff. And we got some furniture. Like we got like uh, a high chair. We got like a bouncer. We got a rocker. Uh, we're getting a rocking chair given to us. But we already bought the crib and we bought like a portable crib. We're going to be getting the strollers and stuff like that here. So at least we're getting all the big stuff out of the way, you know, then we just got to worry about like, you know, diapers, bottles, you know, stuff like that. But definitely kind of getting anxious about it, but very excited, man. I can't wait. See what this little girl is going to look like. Uh. I guess I'll just segue into some sports shit real quick because it'll, it'll be quick. I didn't really watch the games or anything. Sorry, there was a hair on there bugging the shit out of me. Uh, I didn't watch the games this week. It's preseason. I don't really care that much about preseason. But what's weird is there's only three games, so I'm not quite sure how they're doing it this year. Like, is the next game going to be a full scrimmage game like it usually is? Or do we not really do that this year in preseason? Are we just going to like, you know, everybody plays a little bit here and there, but we focus on the regular season, especially since there's that extra game, you know, gives a team kind of, you know, an extra game to get their shit together, I guess. That is one thing that's going to be interesting to see how things go with the extra game. I kind of forgot that they were doing that. And then like how the playoffs work as well. I guess there's only one team getting a buy from each conference now. So that means there'll be six games the first weekend. You'll have three from the AFC, three from the NFC, which is pretty cool. Like we get two extra games because of this basically. But it's just weird, like, you know, we've been used to the one and two seeds getting that by, but now it's just the one seed. You know, it's like, damn, that really fucking matters now, man. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how that shit goes. Hopefully, like, 
like the one thing I don't like about it is the record books basically got to be thrown out now because there's an extra game. So like the 2000 yard runner and all that shit, that's probably going to be common. You know, the 5,000 yard passer, everyone's going to get that for sure. So like the records kind of have to stop from here. Just be like, all right, anything from this time before, was that era of football? Now we have this extra game. We're going to keep different stats because, I mean, I know it's only one game. Like, how many more yards can you get? I guess, you know, at the most, like a running back might get one to 200 yards. A quarterback could get 500, you know, just depending. So it, it it's a little questionable with the, the stat books, you know. You can't really be like, oh, well, he broke the record. It's like, yeah, of course he did. They had an extra game. <clears throat> so it'll be interesting because, like, I know we've done this before. We've gone from, like, 12 to 16 games, I believe. So I don't know how they did the records then. Is that separate as well? Because, obviously, that many games, we're going to get a fucking lot more yards. And I'm pretty sure they broke the records immediately. <laughs> That's what I assume will happen this year. Like I, I assume the touchdown record somewhere is going to get broken, either t- uh, passing or running. So, but anyway, uh, like I said, I didn't really watch the games. I know the Raiders pulled it out, I believe, because there's no overtime or something like that. And then the Sea or not the Seahawks, uh, the Rams decided to go for it, and they didn't get it. So. We ended up winning that way, but like I said, it was I don't even think the starters really played that much. So like I said, you can't really can't even look into that shit. You're just kind of looking at people that may be on your team. But I did get the fantasy stuff set up. I got a fantasy league set up. Right now it's only 10 teams. So if you guys want to join, I'm gonna like send invites to a few people that I know will join. So there may be like five to six spots open. But it, I don't know if you can just search for it, but it'll be under my, you know, the Stephen Hartman podcast. If not, I will put a invite in the descriptions for sure this week. I also got the CBS Pick'em thing started as well. It is also under the Stephen Hartman podcast. That one, I think I could have as many people play as they want. So if you just want to pick games every week, I'm down. I'll put the thing on there. You can join. It doesn't matter whether you're good or not. Like the person that won last year's pickums doesn't really even know football. So, <laughs> and she did really damn good. Like she, uh, uh, my mother-in-law was the one that won Julie and she had, I think almost every week was at least 11 or more wins, which is pretty damn good. I I had a horrible year. I think I ended up losing by like 16 and I was in second place. (laughs) So that tells you how bad everybody did last year, but things were kind of fucked up last year. So, but anyway, I'll put that in the description as well. If you want to join, I'm going to do just regular pick them. I'm not going to do against the spread because that shit's kind of hard, especially for people who don't understand what that is. So all you'll have to do is be like, all right, New York and, Patriots are playing. I, I'm going to pick New York. You know, that's all you got to do. You don't got to worry about points or anything. <coughs> as far as the fantasy team shit, it's just regular PPR. So it's normal fantasy shit. I didn't change any of the rules or anything like that. So if you're used to playing that, cool. Hit me up. And if we get more than 10 people that want to play, I'll make another team. I was kind of thinking about maybe trying to have some kind of prize for the winners as well this year. I just haven't quite figured that out yet. I got a baby coming, so I don't really have that kind of, you know, prize money for things or anything, but I could go do what I used to do. Get all those free gift cards from Bing and shit. (laughs) Give that shit away. Uh, Anyway. Yeah. Just look for that shit. Uh, We got one more preseason game, I guess. And then the regular season starts. So, I will probably want to draft sometime next week. So we'll, we'll get this shit done. Um, guess I'll talk a little bit about big brother. Uh, it was 
Kylan was the one that won HOH. I don't think I told you guys that last time because I didn't know. Uh, he put up Derek F as a pawn, and he put up Claire, which was kind of weird because he's working with Claire, but it was like he kind of wanted to get rid of her. I think it just it doesn't matter. They just want to get rid of anybody that's not in the cookout. So anyway, he, he puts those two up. They have this like twist thing where they can play this game and then bet on who's going to win the veto. And if their bet wins, they also get a veto. So I think only four people played that game to bet. It was like Claire, Kylan. Uh, I can't ever remember her name. Uh, is Christian's girl. I can't think. Alyssa, Alyssa, Alyssa. And uh, who the fuck else played? Aza. She played. Uh, they all made their bets. And then basically it was down to Kylan and Alyssa. And Kylan placed his bet on Alyssa. And Claire placed her bet on Kylan. So, of course, you know, Claire's like, fuck yeah, Kylan, you need to win so I can get this veto and shit, you know. But Kylan like does this thing where you like, hey, Melissa, you want this shit so you can get a veto and I get a veto. So that's what they do. He basically throws it to her so she wins. And like everybody kind of notices that he basically gave up. And like Claire sees it and she's kind of pissed off because, you know, she could have got a veto. Anyway, like fast forward to the veto meeting and shit. Kylan's like. Well, I'm going to save Claire and all this shit. Like he's doing this wonderful thing. And like she says in her diary room, like, dude, you're the reason I'm here. Now you're dangling this in front of me. Like you're some savior, like, fuck you. So it's kind of good to see her like pissed off about that shit. And then, uh, Alyssa goes, oh, well, I'm not going to use mine either. Or I'm not going to use my veto. And Kylan puts up Brittany who she didn't think she was going home because she made a deal with Kylan that she was going to be safe for a couple weeks, but he totally backstabbed her. Cause like I said, he doesn't care as long as it's not a member of the cookout, they're getting rid of the people. And I got to admit, they're doing a really damn good job. I'm surprised that no one's really noticed. The only person that said anything so far is Derek X. Cause he's all like, man, there's no white males left it's only people of color. And it was kind of funny because, uh, Xavier was all like, shut up, dude. <laughs> don't, don't notice. Don't say nothing. You know, we're, we're keeping this quiet or whatever. And then like, I think Claire kind of said something about it too. But, uh, Derek X and Claire, wanted to go after Derek F. They're like, we should get rid of him. Everyone wants to take him to the inn. He's the most likable guy. We should just get rid of him now while we have him up on the block and all this stuff. Of course, Kylan and Xavier and all them are like, no, we don't want to get rid of Derek F. He's part of the cookout. So they just keep like kind of dodging the thing or whatever, even though the, those two are really pushing for it, you know, and they're making a lot of good points. But of course, you know, they get their way and they voted out Brittany. It's like, damn, that sucks. Like, I didn't necessarily like her that much because she was just kind of, I don't know. She whined a lot. That was one thing I didn't, I didn't like that much, but she kind of had a reason to, cause she was on the block like four out of the six weeks that's been going. So it's kind of rough, but. I'm not a fan of people who just cry constantly on the show. So that's one thing. I'm just like, eh, whatever. Kind of glad she's gone, I guess. Kind of sucks because I like to see the things not happen the way they want. You know, it sucks that the cookout is doing what they're doing so well. And it doesn't seem like anybody has a clue. And it's probably going to be those six at the end. And then they'll have to turn on each other, of course, but. It's just like, damn, I can't believe that these guys have actually pulled this shit off, you know? 
But anyway, um, they have the HOH and it's like a balance beam thing. Everybody does pretty bad, except for like three people. It was Alyssa. She did really good right off the bat. I think she had the top spot. And then Derek X, he actually fell off once, and then he almost won the game. Like, he was like literally like a tenth of a second away from hitting the button, even though he had fell off. And then... uh Sarah Beth ended up winning, I believe. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because she's working with Kylan and shit. And I was all like, great. Now it's just his HOH again. But I don't know if she's going to do exactly what Kylan wants. Especially when he goes like, hey, we need to put up these two over here. Instead of putting up like some strong people, which I'm pretty sure she's going to want to do. And she's going to question, why aren't we getting rid of these people? And then she might realize, oh shit, these people are working together. Or Kylan may end up just telling her. I don't know. I just know she's out of the loop. She's not part of the cookout. Like I said, it's people of color. So Sarah Beth is not part of that. So it'll be interesting to see if she's smart enough to see what's going on and go after Xavier you know, maybe Tiffany, you know, put two of them up like, oh shit, there's six of them. We need to get rid of one of these guys. Cause you know, that's a fucking strong team. So, you know, they definitely need, uh, if they don't figure it out in the next week or two, they're screwed. That six will definitely make it, you know, one of them will win for sure. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, those other guys are kind of starting to figure it out. So maybe Sarah Beth will kind of put some shit together, especially when she goes to like ask people who they should, you know, who, who should she put up? And I guarantee when they say like, Oh, we should put up Claire and uh, Derek X. She's going to be like, but why Claire, you know, or something like that, you know? So we'll see. Like I said, they've been very smart they may be able to pull this out. They may be able to, cause like I said, Sarah Beth is with Kylan. Basically they're kind of a showmance. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, they are, uh, the, fuck, what are the, the, it's a gambling thing, wild card or some shit like that. I'm pretty sure it's tonight. So we'll see how that goes. It's uh chopping block roulette, I believe. So basically like the person could put up someone else if they want to or something. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure the only people that are going to have the money to do that will be like Derek X, Derek F. Cause they both got a hundred. I don't think anybody else got a hundred that's left because Brittany had a hundred. She got let go. I think that was, I think there was only the three that got the hundred bucks. So those two are the only ones that are going to be able to play the roulette, I think, because it's like 250 bucks. And I'm pretty sure Derek X and Derek F will get the $150 this week or whatever it is, the max. So they'll be able to play everyone else. I don't think we'll have enough money. So I'm hoping Derek X gets it because he, like I said, he's noticing what's going on. So I'm hoping that he would do something, even though he did tell Xavier that he would throw the comp to him. But he also did kind of say like, "Uh, I think this guy's like trying to put me up, you know? So it'll be interesting. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, it's later tonight. So that'll be on the next one. Probably. Um, I guess that's pretty much it for big brother. Talked about some sports. There was no fucking news again. Like I said, it's all the same shit that I talked about last time. And like I said, I just don't feel like talking about it again. So skipping news, I guess I could talk about the crazy shit that's going on around here. Like we had three cops shot the other day during an armed robbery. I guess we had another cop shot. 
pulling someone over. He just started walking up to the car and the guy just started unloading on him. There's just all kinds of crazy shit going on with uh, just shootings. And it's kind of getting a little scary because it's really close. It's just like, damn, the, the one with the three cops was literally like not even a quarter mile away from my house. And it's just like, fuck, that is way too close for comfort, man. Like, I understand this kind of shit goes on everywhere, but it just seems like it's going on here a lot fucking more often than it should be. I really wish we had the funds to get the hell out of this state. That's all I, I'm i saying, because it's starting to be a little bit worrisome living here. <laughs> I don't like it. Definitely want to move somewhere where, you know, they're not in the top five of crime every year. So anyway, I'm going to segue into a life story. <laughs> This one's kind of a shitty story because it like, you know, what happened? It, 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 it sucked for sure. I'm, I'm starting to think that I might've even already told this story about me getting hit in the eye with a baseball. I can't remember if I told this story or not. This might help me with my memory. Anyway, if I did tell the story, it was like one of the first ones. So I'm just going to tell it again. Uh, I'm going to say I must have been in like second grade, something like that. I was pretty young. <clears throat> we were like playing T-ball or some shit like that at school. And one of the kids hit the ball. And it like came back and it like smacked me in the eye because I was not good at sports. I didn't catch it. <laughs> now, like, I can't remember if it, I'm, my memory is not that great. Like I said, when this happened, I was real young. I can't remember if I got hit in the face by a pitch or somebody hitting it. Either way, a baseball hit my face. Like not exactly in my eye, I don't think, but it definitely, you know, hit that area because what happened was that ball had some kind of parasites on it. I'm guessing from shit or something in the grass, who knows? And those parasites got in my eyeball and it started making me blind. Like, I guess it was pretty bad. Like I said, I'm, I was pretty young. I don't really remember any of it. I just remember most of the aftermath. But apparently my eye got pretty bad and then it started going to my other eye. And they got pretty, I guess, cloudy and they were pretty fucked up. So, you know, my uncle takes me to an eye place immediately or whatever as soon as, you know, whatever happened. And, uh, like I said, they say, oh, there's parasites in his eye. We need to start doing this steroid shots or some shit like that. I think they wanted to do laser surgery, but like I said, this was like late eighties. Maybe laser surgery was not popular. It was not used a lot. Nobody knew what the fuck it was. So my uncle was basically like, no, we need to do something else probably. Cause I don't think he trusted it. So he t they said, well, we could do like these steroid shots or something like that, whatever it was that they put in my eyes. But like, all right. So I would go to the eye doctor. This is how I would remember it. We'd go to this eye doctor and it sucked because it was like, I don't know, an hour and a half away for some reason. <laughs> it was far as fuck, but I'm guessing because it was a specialist. We'd get there. They would, you know, have me check my eyes, see what I could read on the board. You know, the little E, you know, different sizes for each uh, layer or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, 
And I remember not being able to read most of it, like maybe the second or third line at the most. <clears throat> then they'd put your face in those things, you know, which one's better? One, two, one, two, do that shit. But then they did this other shit. And like, I had this done before as well, but not these other parts, but they would put this thing in there and it would just kind of be like a light and then they'd blow air on your eye. And that like would fuck me up. You know, I didn't like that shit at all. So you get, you know, both eyes, they'd blow air in. And then like the next one, it was always like these weird kind of lights. And I never really knew what they were doing, you know? All I knew was, is it was really bright and it fucking hurt to keep my eyes open. Basically half the time they would have to like use one of those things to keep my eye open because I would want to shut them and shit. But I just remember, you know, it'd just be like all these crazy lights going on in my eyeball. And I didn't like that shit. And then after all that, they would fucking pull out this needle and slowly put it into my eyeball and shoot my eyeball up with like what I was told later on was steroids. And it happened, I think every six months for about five to six years, I had to go do this. Now, obviously it helped because I can see pretty decently. I am still somewhat blind though. You know, I have trouble reading small shit. And what I was told is those shots, of course, the penetration into my eyeball caused like scabs and stuff like that. Plus the steroids also cause cataracts. So I have, you know, those two things also fucking with my vision. So of course, you know, they probably want to do some kind of laser surgery nowadays to help fix that, which I probably should, you know, it would, it'd be nice to be able to see, you know, hundred percent. I've never, I've never seen a hundred percent in my life. So it'd be interesting to be able to be crystal clear, you know, but anyway, like I said, they did that for like six years. And it would have kept going probably. But one day I just got smart and I started remembering what the eye chart said. I would stand up close to it so I can read it, of course. And I would just start memorizing like E, U, W, T, R, you know, just reading them and just repeating it over and over and over and over and over. And I would just kind of like slowly like seem like I was improving, you know, make the doctors think shit was better and it worked. Eventually they were like, man, his, his vision's better and all this shit. And it eventually I didn't have to go back to that place. And I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't, but I'm also like, damn, I probably should have let them keep doing what they were doing. Cause obviously it was working. I, I was just a scared kid. I didn't like the needles going into my eyeballs. I didn't like the little lights. I didn't like any of that shit. It all scared me, you know, but I probably should have just kept going through it and my eyes probably would have been a lot better. You know, like I said, it, it's still good. I can see it's just, you know, not the best, but like I said, uh, when I recently went to the eye doctor, they were all, uh, yeah, you got major scars in your eyes and you have cataracts from the steroids that they shot in your eyeballs. So that's, you know, I can imagine that's getting worse because it's just, like I said, it's just age. It's not going to get any better. So I'm like, eventually I should probably just get it done. It's pretty cheap nowadays. So. It's not like the $2,000 it used to be an eye. It's like you can go to places and get it done for like 300 bucks an eye. So I may end up doing that someday. It just worries me. Like my cousin Tina, I remember she got it done back in the day. And she always said that she kind of wish she didn't because she, she got so sensitive to the night light or whatever, you know, like headlights coming at you at night. 
she really couldn't drive that well anymore. And I'm like, I already have that problem. So I'm just like, I don't, I don't know if I want to deal with that shit. But yeah, that was, was a pretty shitty thing as a kid. Like I said, it was, it was like a nightmare every six months I had to go through. Like I knew it was coming. Like they would try to lie to me saying we're going somewhere. And it was just like, I fucking know where we're going. Like I'm not dumb, but it sucked. And it's, you know, it's crazy just from a baseball. Like you said, rolling around in some grass might have rolled over some fucking raccoon shit or something. Who knows why that happened? But yeah. That's uh, my shitty life story. <laughs> I hope you all appreciate the, the fucking thing of something going into your eyeball. <laughs> is it just imagine as an eight year old kid just watching this needle stab you in the eyeball. They wouldn't knock you out. So you had to, you had to be awake for it the whole time. So you're just watching it go into your pupil. And then, they, of course, they got to do the other eye, too. So, And then, of course, the stuff they put in my eyes, I would be super dilated for, like, two days. I had to wear glasses all the time and shit. And I hated that shit. But, yeah, that's my shitty life story. Like I said, I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure I've told that story. So if I did and you've heard it, I'm sorry. <laughs> That was like the first thing that came to my mind today. I was just like, you know what? The eyeball story. That sounds like something good to tell. You know, people like to hear about fucked up shit like that. Um, I guess that's pretty much it for today. This one's a little shorter than it was last time. Like I said, just because there was no news or anything that I really want to talk about. Like I said, it's the same exact thing. It's just like, damn. So done. I don't even like looking at the news because it's just that same shit. And like, I, I guess I could just like Google some information about like those schools with those missing kids and shit. Like I've been wanting to check that out. And then like, I was listening to, I think it was Legion of Skanks the other night and they started talking about, you know, I think they were talking about the R Kelly thing. And then they started talking about like the sex trafficking and all kinds of crazy shit. And it just made me think like we have so many missing people in this country constantly. And it's just like, I don't know, I guess it's just kind of accepted that it happens, but it's just weird, you know, like, I was thinking, you know, about the hundreds of kids in Canada going missing and no one cares, right? But then you like look up, it's like hundreds of thousands of kids go missing a year or some shit like that. Or that might be people. I think it was like 30 or 40,000 kids or something like that. I can't remember. But either way, it's like, damn, that many people go missing a year? How does that happen? Like, I understand some people just want to go away. They want to be missing or whatever but you can't tell me all those people are just like yeah i'm 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 gonna go off the grid you can't just do that that easily nowadays so i don't know it just blows me away that that kind of shit is still going on you know and then of course like i said the sex trafficking thing just like we hear about every now and again but when you hear about the numbers, it's like, damn, shouldn't we be hearing about this or reporting about this a lot more often? It just seems like we don't really care about that kind of shit. I don't know. Kind of weird. Fucking R. Kelly thing, man. That that whole thing is just turning into a weird fucking case. I guess he had a whole bunch of his buddies testify against him today saying, yeah, he slept with my kids too. It's just like, Jesus Christ, man. Uh, Fucking just, just amazing. I mean, we already knew it. He fucking tried to marry what's her name when she was 15. Right. So 
I don't know why any of this is surprising. It's funny how much of a difference that we care about that kind of shit nowadays compared to how it was not even 50 years ago. Cause there was people marrying 13 and 14 year olds that were super famous people. I mean, like I said, classic Elvis, you know, married his girl. I think she was like 14 years old. I think Jerry Lewis married his cousin at 13 years old. You know, Woody Allen fucking groomed his daughter basically for years. You know, all that shit was just kind of accepted. I don't know why no one really goes after that kind of shit. And like I said, the other thing, I guess it's starting to come out a little bit more, especially with like Marilyn Manson, but how are all these, you know, hair band, you know, metal guys and all that shit, not getting in all kinds of me too trouble. <laughs> you can't tell me those guys weren't just constantly probably sleeping with underage girls. Not that they were trying to, but you know how it was back then. You know, girls just wanted to get backstage and shit and guaranteed they weren't telling the truth about their age all the time. So, so you kind of wonder like, where are these girls? How come they're not coming out against Motley Crue or fucking, you know, kiss or anything like that. You can't tell me those guys weren't doing some shady shit back then. I don't know. It's just weird. Like I said, I understand PC correctness. You know, some stuff needs to be addressed. But, you know, history's history. We shouldn't try to hide it or, you know, shame people because of it, especially if they've changed. Now, like I said, R. Kelly is totally different. That dude obviously had not changed. He should have been in trouble to begin with. But, you know. I don't know. It's just, it's just crazy shit. I don't get it. I, I don't know. I guess I'm not going to get into all that shit. Cause that's just a whole nother thing. I don't want fucking people coming after me. Like I'm not fucking, <laughs> you know, pro this or pro that. Like I'm, I'm for everybody being able to do whatever the fuck they want. So that's how I feel. If you want to call yourself a horse and marry a pig, go for it. Like, I don't give a shit. You know, everybody should have the right to be able to do what the fuck they want. If I want to just fucking produce heroin in my backyard, I should be able to just like, you know, if someone wants to fucking have four fucking husbands or, you know, whatever, <laughs> you should be able to do what you want as long as it's legal. Like I said, you know, as long as you're not like hurting people, you're not fucking, like you said, you're not doing sex trafficking. I don't agree with that kind of shit that I'm definitely against that. Do not sex traffic people, but you know, if people want to do something and you know, I, I don't know, I guess that's where it gets a little, you know, slippery slope type shit because you know you could start saying well fuck what if someone just wants to eat people <laughs> or something like that i don't know they like said it just it gets complicated man we can't please everybody i guess is like what i'm trying to say you know like i'm all for women being empowered and all that right equality the problem is, is like they want the equality at certain times. Then at other times they want to be treated like a woman, you know, in which I get it. They should be treated like a woman in certain times. They shouldn't be treated like a man at points. So that's why it can't be equality because we need to treat you differently. You need to treat us differently. You know, that's just, that's just how humans are. We are different. We can't like, for example, the dude that's beating the shit out of women in UFC, that's equality. That is not okay. It is not 
all right, that some dude is now saying that he's a, a chick and going and beating up these women because it's just not fair. He is a way bigger person, way stronger. I understand he's saying he's a girl now and I get that. Okay. You're a girl now, but don't go and start beating up women. You're basically a woman beater. Just because you're now identifying as a female doesn't mean you're any better than fucking some fucking hillbilly beating the shit out of his wife. You're doing the exact same thing. You're fucking beating the shit out of a way smaller person, a female. Like it's just not, it's just not right. Like I said, that equality to me is stupid as fuck. That should not happen. It's just like, why we don't have females playing football with the guys. Could you imagine? Like, I don't care. Take your biggest female fighter and put them up against the smallest male fighter. It's just not fair, man. It It's just physics. It's how we're built. It It's just not going to happen, you know? Like I said, every now and again, you'll get those, like, I, I've seen a video of this one girl beating the shit out of the, her boyfriend because he was way smaller than her, but he was probably also holding back because he's not supposed to hit his girl. So that's also, you know, like I said, it's, it's a quality when you want it, you know, I want to be paid like a man, but I don't want to have to do the exact same man work, you know? I want to be able to, uh, I don't want to have to do the labor part, but I want to be able to get the same pay. You know, it's like, for example, like I worked at Dillard's, correct? Uh, I was working on this, uh, doc. There was two men. It was me and this dude, Paul. And then there was like six females. None of the females would unload the truck because they couldn't lift the boxes. Now, equality should be like, all right, well, why do I always have to be the one that's putting the boxes out here? Shouldn't the girls have to do it? But that's just stupid because they can't. Like I said, it's not. I don't know. Like I said, we have different things that we can do. We're not the same. So that's why it can't be equality. We should just, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm for women being empowered, thinking they can do anything they want, which they can. Most of them are usually smarter. They fucking, they do way better. They live longer. Like women are amazing, but to think that they can do, like I said, to think that they can go, I'll put a wig on and fight me and think that it's fair. It's crazy. It's not fair whatsoever. I'm going to probably be taller, heavier. I'm going to have thicker bones. You know, I'm just, I'm just going to be way bigger. So it's just, it's just not fair either way. So that that's where I go, where equality is kind of like, yeah, how about we just, how about we just treat people the way they should be treated? Like I said, let people do what they want to do. I don't know. But then again, I guess if we let people what they want to do, we let that guy go turn himself into a girl and he gets to go beat up women for a living. It just blows me away that we allow that kind of shit. Like I just, I don't get that at all. And then like, I look at the rest of the world I understand the rest of the world isn't, you know, our barometer of how we should be, but the rest of the world is definitely kind of looking at us and all this PC shit kind of like, you guys need to chill the fuck out, man. (laughs) You know, like you're definitely going about a lot of this wrong. So I don't know. Like I said, not that they're the best judge of characters in other countries, but I think we might be taking some of this a little too far. Like I said, I understand we need to be nice. We need to treat each other good. You know, that kind of shit. I agree with all that, but 
it feels like we are really trying to divide our people when we were supposed to be united, but it really feels like we're just like, all right, if you believe this, don't come near me live over there. And it almost feels just like, you know, how we treated black people. Oh, you're black. You live over there now. I don't want that near me, you know, and that's how it kind of feels, you know, with the way they treat people. It's very similar to that, you know, it's very separate, you know, and that's not how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to kind of, you know, live together and fucking harmony type shit, but people are definitely making it hard to live together. I guess. I don't know. I just try to keep to myself. I don't care what my neighbors do. I don't care what anybody really does. Truthfully, I just keep to myself and live my life. I don't know why we've gotten into this thing where we have to like monitor everyone else's lives. Like, Hey, you can't do this. You can't do this. Cause I don't like it. Stop it. It's like, wait, who, who put you in charge of my life? And why does it matter what I do? Why do you care what I'm doing? Live your life. You know, I don't know. I'm kind of rambling again, I guess. I don't know if I made a fucking point here at all, but I'm just, like I said, I'm not trying to say that women aren't as good as men. And I'm not trying to say that people can't be different than what they're saying or what they are. You know, like, like I said, I'm, I'm all for people being whatever they think they are. So don't get mad at me for any of that shit. I'm just, like I said, I just kind of find some of this stuff a little suspecty. I find it like just a little weird. Like I said, the whole thing about men going into female sports is strange to me. That's all I'm saying. And we just got to, you know, kind of realize that we can't be a hundred percent PC or equality because that just doesn't exist. You know, we just need to try to work on, like I said, treating each other better, but that's never going to happen, man. Like I said, people are too set in their ways. They they're going to believe what they believe in no matter what you can give them a million facts and they'll just be like, no, nope, that's not right. So it's just, I think we're, we're doomed to probably end up having some kind of thing where, you know, we literally have a North and South type thing going again, where, you know, we believe this down here. We believe that up there because we, we just can't get along and it's sad. You know, we were supposed to be this, you know, melting pot of diversity that, you know, everybody gets along and accepts each other for their flaws. And, you know, we don't care if you believe in what God or, we don't care if you voted for this person or, but that shit does not exist anymore. It's all about, you better believe what I believe or I fucking hate you. And it's just bonkers to me. Cause I mean, I can care less, man. If you believe in God, Allah, fucking Zeus, if you're gay, if you think you're a horse, if you think any of that shit, I don't care. Good for you, man. I'm fucking happy for you. I'm glad I'm hoping you're doing good. That's how I am. I can give a shit less like politics. I don't care what side you're on, man. I'm hoping the best for you. That's how I feel. And that that's how we're supposed to be. But for some reason now it's like, if you're not what I am, fuck you. Get away from me. Get out of my state. Go live somewhere else. (laughs) And it's fucked up, man. It's getting even so crazy with this PC PC shit. This is the one thing that I'll I'll end on. All right. The PC stuff with basically deleting history. 
we are taking things out of our history. We're not teaching certain stuff. We don't want to admit to a lot of the bad things we did. We don't want to have bad words in our books. We're totally alter alterating. Man, I can't. All right. We're totally making history the way we want it. And that's very Nazi-ish. That's exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to get rid of all the information. They wanted to only have what they wanted out there. They only wanted their beliefs. And that's how this kind of feels, man. When you start, you know, making the story your way instead of how it actually was, just because you don't want to hurt someone's feelings, that's very Nazi-ish. It's just kind of weird. Like I said, you can't, you can't hide the history. We're supposed to learn from it. We're supposed to see how bad it was and how negative things were and how bad we treated people and how we realized that we weren't supposed to do this anymore. If you take away all that, how are we supposed to learn those lessons? If we just make it seem like it's all been sunshine and lollipops, then everyone's just going to think that they're always right because there's never been any correction to, you know, what they fucking believe or whatever. I don't know. Like I said, it's just, it's very weird to either delete history or recreate it into a way to make people feel better about the history. That's not good. You're supposed to, history is supposed to stay the way it is, no matter what. So that way we have the correct information. Now, if we start telling people that, you know, like I said, we start taking words out of books because they offend somebody. And then one day they, they come across the real book and they're like, wait, what is this shit? You know, it just seems, it doesn't seem to be very productive to do that kind of thing. It seems a lot better to let people read the awfulness to see how things actually were and to learn from it, not to hide from it. Like, I don't know. I don't get it. Like I said, I understand we're supposed to be PC or whatever, but that doesn't mean you got to correct history. You don't go back and change things. You don't erase things because they made you feel bad. You leave that there so other people feel bad and they go, man, that made me feel bad. I'm not going to do that. Like that, that's the point of history. So you fucking learn from it. <coughs> like, I don't know how that one saying goes, but you're doomed to repeat history if you don't fucking learn from it or whatever the fuck it is, you know? So that is the one thing I definitely don't agree with all this shit. Like I said, you can be offended. You can not like it. That's fine. Don't get rid of it. That that just doesn't make any sense. Kind of like the statue thing, like to get rid of. I understand there was a lot of them, which is kind of weird. Why there were so many slave owner statues or whatever the fuck. But you shouldn't hide it. That should be a thing where you go, you see this fucking idiot right here? He was the reason we had slaves. He was the dummy that thought it was a good idea to shackle people, to beat them, and make them do our work. This fucking idiot right here. Not Now, in 20 years, those people aren't going to know that dude existed. They're not going to know that that asshole owned slaves because we tore down history. So now it's like, we're like, Oh, well that bad stuff didn't happen. Right. It's all gone. We don't have to acknowledge it. So that, that's like I said, that's where it's a slippery slope with that shit. You can't just not acknowledge the bad. You have to have it there. You have to be able to be like, Oh shit. This is why we don't do this anymore. Or this is why we do do this. You know, it's just, it's just weird to me. 
like I said, I, I agree with a lot of it. I agree that we should treat people nicely. I agree that we should let them, if they want to marry a dude, a chick, whatever you want. If you want to have kids, you don't want to have kids, anything good for you, man. But like I said, when you take it too far, when you start fucking with like history and shit like that, that's when that kind of stuff needs to stop. It shouldn't be affecting that kind of shit. Cause like, like I said, let's say in 20 years, someone else goes, well, all this fucking shit that happened here, I'm offended by. So we're going to erase all the, the, the LGBTQ or whatever shit that, that never existed. That was, you know, it's, it's on the same level. Like just because they're going to be like, man, that, that really offended us. We didn't like that era. We don't agree with it. So we're just going to totally eliminate it from our history. It's just not good. You can't do that. So that's, that's where I draw the line with a lot of that shit. And like I said, with the other shit, like you said, I'm probably going to upset a lot of people with what I said today, but I don't, I, I don't have anything against anybody. I just don't like certain aspects of this stuff. That's all I'll say. Um, I kind of rambled on there for a while. I think we're already almost to an hour. Yeah. I was all like, damn, this is a short one. And it turned into a long one. I guess I'll go ahead and get off. I don't, I don't really have anything else to say. <laughs> I already did my life story and I, I'm just rambling at this point. So I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I'll definitely be here on Friday. I know I said I was going to watch a movie. I just, I can't find anything that I really want to watch. That's free on YouTube right this second. Like hang them high is like one thing I thought about watching, but just like, I don't know how I'm going to make a Western entertaining. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I'll be back Friday for sure. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably just record another one. So I have it in the bank and then, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I was going to say there. (laughs) Uh, well, I guess we'll just catch you guys on Friday. I appreciate everybody for listening. Hit that like button, maybe subscribe uh, share on Facebook, Twitter, anything like that's helpful. And I appreciate you guys and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.